now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, I'm in red, and in yellow, it's the name of the show, it's called The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I've changed my background here. Usually I use, yes. I use the nighttime background, which I used on the last interview with Lori, and then I suddenly realized she's all lit and it's daytime down there and it, all of a sudden it's nighttime up here so now here is the daytime version of my same set yeah we're in sync this, and i do love your background this it is, looks like a town yeah. and country spread this is Lori thompson by the way Lori uh was my uh, we called her my news woman she was really just my aide de camp <laughs> news broad news broad <laughs> And uh, she's now living a very happy life in Florida. She's gotten married for the first time in her life. I know, man. Do you believe it? How old were you when you first got married? This time? 61. 61. Okay. And, uh, and you're what now? 63. 63. So that was about a year and a half. She's an yeah. old, old broad. You're coming to my funeral, right? Aren't you? I'm totally coming to your funeral. I'm okay, told good, Rick, good. I, 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 will t- I will tell Marjorie to and make sure you get the invitation. Good, absolutely. Well, it's an invitation to a cremation. That's yeah, interesting. Oh, that rhymes. well, that's good. Uh-huh. Those are better because then there are like action photographs, sometimes video presentations, and you get a feel for the person. Like when they were still alive. Well, I'm still alive. I'm 83. I know. 83. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got. I know, Ben. I'm, I've got an idea for a do your own funeral, where you get to record something that plays at your funeral and it's interactive with those attending your memorial, mm-hmm. and you sell them for twenty nine ninety five. Good. Which good. Is, That's a good idea. Yeah. You're good. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I I've been very morbid lately, I guess, uh, because you know, my best friend died. I know from the Letterman Show. Yeah, Shucky, and and ever since then, I'm just like morbid about everything. You know, really? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I wake up every morning and go, "Is this my last day on Earth?" You know, I mean. It's just, <laughs> Yeah. What did Bubs used to say? Would you rather know well, the day yeah, of the yeah. week you're going to die, no, no, or just no? She said, "Wouldn't it be? It wouldn't it be great if you knew the day you were going to die, but not the year." Yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Mondays. <laughs> At least you know that way you could be paranoid once a year instead of being paranoid all the time that this is your last day. So yeah. Right. That, so there was merit in that, I thought. So what what made you decide to get married after at 61? This is unusual. And for the first time, yeah. You know, I wasn't against marriage at all. Yeah. I just didn't think it was it would work with my lifestyle. I'm very independent slash headstrong. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, I thought for a while it inhibits a person's growth. Like, you can't just do whatever you want you know you um mm-hmm. or go wherever you want on a, on no notice at all yeah and uh, and so then i found someone who just was really uh different enough from me that the things he did that were different i admired and he must have admired the things i did differently because it it worked there was an admiration and a respect that's, that's all you need that's all you need you yes know. that is really respect Patience. I would put patience yeah. right up there. And that's a great thing about Marjorie and I. We neither admire or respect each other. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to keep her, man. And a sense of humor. You got to have a, a really good sense well, of humor. Well, I, I talked to her about that. And I said, I think most women, when, when if, they, if you really drill down as to what they found sexy about somebody, it wasn't sex itself. And I said it would boil down to sense of humor. Do I make oh, you, do I make you laugh? And she said, yes. absolutely. She says that's the reason I love you is you make me laugh. Yes, yeah. because it makes every moment potentially very fun or worthwhile. Yeah, you know when you're talking about 
because eventually you start to talk about quote mundane things yeah. but if you have the humor it's doesn't have to be mundane. stay yeah. mundane yeah so anyway back in the day though uh, the only problem i ever had with you is you had certain shall we say drug problems oh we can go ahead and say that you yeah. want to talk and, about uh, that substance of uh, any kind and 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 what i how i used to describe it is sometimes when you have somebody who's on drugs as you were, we didn't know how you, what, you, what way, what, how you were going to come in the next morning. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you didn't go to sleep. Okay. Uh, you just came it in seemed and like, the show. Yeah. I yeah. usually tried to catch 10 minutes. But, you know, I put up with it because you were worth it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, though, that some mornings, though, it was like driving a car with somebody in the passenger seat tugging on the steering wheel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, it got bad. I mean, it got bad. Yeah. I was in a relationship where we drank alcoholically. And so eventually... Alcoholically? Al I've never heard that term. Alcoholically. Yeah. I like that. I mean, with way too much enthusiasm. Yeah. And so, and I, I loved him, but I couldn't take that relationship. I had to leave that relationship because there's it's so hard for two people to get sober at the same time. Staggered willpower, staggered, yeah. you know, days of, of, you know, potentially a bad day. It was very hard, but it was also hard to leave. And he was not pleased, but there was just no way but around But you were going it. through a lot of stuff in that at that time in your life. You know? Oh, yeah. I was, yeah, I was, uh, well, I'd seen the writing on the wall for radio, you know, how that the stations were getting bought up by conglomerates yeah. and tracking technology was available mm -hmm. and the salaries were going low. For instance, I went to work for, um, oh, I used to call it Clear Channel. Well, they, I know because I was over there for like about a month or so. Yeah, I called it the evil empire. Well, then, what happened was, he, 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 you know, when you were working for me, I don't know how much you were making. All I know is that once they signed a contract with me, and I said, fine, uh, I will sign the contract with you, but I will not sign it until you make a deal with Lori Thompson. Oh, huh? that is nice, Bennett. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I said, and I, I don't know if I told you that or not. But, I don't think so. But, but I wanted yeah. to give you negotiating power. Ah, yeah. I remember you convinced me to get an agent. And that was, they cost you money, but they get you things. Yeah, but I, and, but I, wanted, you, I wanted you to be able to negotiate on your own terms. Uh, and so by saying I wouldn't sign the contract, my contract until you signed a contract, put you in the, in the driver's seat in those. Yeah. It gave me leverage. I didn't yeah. know you. That's, that's very appreciated. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. And, I was doing pretty well at yeah. 105. And yeah. then when I, but then when you, you and I ended and then they put me in with Johnny Steele, who's a good guy. And funny. Well, I disagree um, with you about good guy, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then I got a job with Don Blue, who's just who was a dream to work with. He's a he's fun. And he's, he's a nice kind. guy, really nice he, guy. He yeah. is, and that was good. But um, it, it it was not a it, it was an okay. You, you got to realize you got to realize, folks, what happened in the radio business at this point. She and I both left. I left Live 105. She left Live 105 eventually. And um, the next time we got back together in the same area was we went to work for Clear Channel, which is now uh, iHeartRadio. And uh, we uh, uh, just, you know, we went to all these stations, all the radio stations were in the same building. Yeah. Uh, I was used to my competitor being across town, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. you never you never saw your competitor. Here. Yeah, but you got, here you got I, your I go on, I go I, I go on a break in the hallway and my pal next door doing a show and for another radio station was Jim Lang. You know, uh, yeah, the old dating game. I, I got it? to be pals with Jim. He was a yeah. real real lefty. Did you know that? No. Oh, wow. We would talk that, politics. And he was, I, I, I even was gasping because he was more radical than I was. Wow. Oh, no, because yeah. you rubbed off on me big time. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, but, I was from the cornfields and raised in the church. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, in Clear Channel, you would see your competitor at the water fountain. 
you know. Yeah. And yeah. and I could I couldn't get used to that. Now what happened with her was I don't know what you were making. Let's say you were making a hundred thousand a year, maybe more at yeah. Live One Hundred Five. Okay, let's just yes. say that. It's, it uh, was a little more. A little more. Yeah. Whatever yeah. I I let I made them negotiate you with. Anyway, yeah. Here here was, was the thing. So I uh, where was I? Uh, so you were talking uh, about the clear channel. Yeah, your clear you know. channel. Uh, so she goes over there, and she starts voice tracking shows for the weekend and you had to you literally had to do it within an hour and a half or something you did because um and it was do you remember Steve and Masters then and then what they paid you for was an hour and was a half the hour <laughs> yes yeah it was it was awful so that's what i first started doing and by the way there. the programming she was voice tracking was about eight hours worth of programming yeah. So she was spent and, uh, eight hours on the air as a voice, but got paid for the hour and a half to record it. Yeah, it was. And then there was, um, well, 9-11 happened. And so then they, they made me a part of the morning show, but I still had to do uh, track shows that ran on the weekend mm -hmm. as a jock, which I love jocking anyway, so it was fine. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. But then there uh, was a man date that came down that we couldn't track we had to do those shows live on the weekend and that was just it was but see people were still tracking but i had been locked out of the tracking system because i i didn't get along with the program director at all and i was lippy yeah <laughs> so i mean this is the reason radio has it's not the radio it, radio doesn't exist anymore you know mm -hmm. so yeah and they was in that that clear channel was for half of what I was making at 105. Oh. Yeah, because I saw the writing on the wall long ago. Was it 96 when they deregulated and yeah. you could own a whole bunch of yeah, radio stations? That, that, that's, what, that's what did it. And then some yeah. of these guys bought too many radio stations. Uh, I think Clear Channel had over 1,200 radio stations they owned. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't afford it. <laughs> All yeah. the bills started yeah. coming due. And so they had to yeah. sell a lot of them off eventually. Yeah, it was, um, I did not, except for Don Blue, um, mm -hmm. I did not like my Clear Channel experience because they had me doing traffic in the morning for like eight stations. Yeah, exactly. Traffic exactly. is not my bag at all. And there, I couldn't interact with Don, which is more my thing. And so uh, that didn't last long. Yeah, I well, got to do a big that, that was the business then. Anyway, so, I mean, people must be thrilled to see you and I together. And it's kind of like we never stopped. Right. Well, yeah. And get this. You would be amazed at the reach of that show. I'm on a cruise down the Danube River um, that went to Budapest and uh, Vienna and Prague, which I love. How do you like those? But, how do you like those boat trips? Was this one of the I like them. Was that, I one, like of, them. Was that one of the long boats? Uh, it was. Yeah. Yeah. And they you could you could um, kayak in the Danube River, which is why we went. And so I'm, I'm at the, you know, I'm at dinner and we get talking to another couple who are from the Bay Area. He was a prosecutor in Santa Clara County yeah. and she's in real estate. They're real mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, we get into the, what do you do? What did you do? And uh, she says, I went to one of those morning shows. I went to one of those live broadcasts with the, of the Alex Bennett show when uh when we were doing our thing and so this is like people know about this show people contact me you know through facebook all the time that mm -hmm. remember that and fondly yeah and then yeah yeah so i mean it, it, uh, but it it it, it was uh, it was a great time for us you know it was a great yeah. time it was great we had a lot of fun you know who i've had on here the last couple of weeks chuck varnum Oh, Farnham, how is he? Didn't he have a son that's probably like yeah. running from here now? Yeah, yeah. I think he's, he's getting Social Security now. Uh, <laughs> but no, but we haven't talked in like 25 years. And uh, we've suddenly started uh, up this relationship and he's done these kind of interviews too. And I'm sure yeah. the audience is thrilled to see both of you because they, I'm sure they, it's not like they always ask me, well, they usually ask me about you. Whenever mm -hmm. they, you know, say, oh, what happened to Lori Thompson? Mm -hmm. And I go, well, say she's, she's living in Florida. She's married. You know. Sassy and heavy and sober. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How long have you been sober? Well, AA, which is, which is great. 
I mean, it helped me get sober. I think, but, it, was, I think uh, it was Bob Rubin who said he would go to AA, but he couldn't remember when the meetings were. Right. Yeah. I like that line. <laughs> yeah. But I would, you know, they say once you have a drink, so if you've been, you haven't had a drink in six years, which was my case, and then you had a drink at a party, yeah. then then all of a sudden your sobriety is broken. I don't quite agree with that. I don't agree I with that either because that. that's that's setting up people to fail. In other yes, words, because, I, yeah, because I then, then they go, well, I've had one drink. I may as well have two. That is exactly the mentality I developed and right. became a binge drinker. I never was before. I was just more of a social, a very social drinker. Yeah. And, uh, but they, you know, that mentality, I think, does a little harm. And so, but I mean, I have been sober for the majority of the last 15, um, 20 years. 20 years. Majority. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's but uh, there have been, there was a three year, I moved to Key West. Key West, because I'd always wanted to, and it is the most difficult place to stay sober. I mean, New Orleans might be right up there, but Key West was almost impossible. Because there's a, a bar on every corner, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're expected. Yeah. Drinking is part of the culture. Yeah, yeah. That's it's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. I, uh, well, I've never been a drinker, as you know. No, you I know. never. You're a Diet Coke man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, here's the thing that I've said to people. Uh, I said this to Farnham when I was talking to him. The show we did in San Francisco, okay, think about that show mm -hmm. at Live 105. Could we do that show today and get away with it? Oh, no way, man. We were so politically... <laughs> we were politically beyond edgy. I mean, it, no, I can't yeah. remember. We were well, on... I what? We were just wild. I mean, and we got called on the carpet a lot, but as long as we didn't just respond. But what I'm saying but, is, is that most of the th the uh, jokes we would pull, things like that. I I've talked to Bubbles. I talked to Bubbles every couple of weeks now, and and Bubbles said he, 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 there's a lot of jokes he's taken out of his act. Yeah, you know that you, you can't backlash. you can't do that. I mean, do you remember his his catchphrase doing traffic? Well, I, he had a few. Park it, whore. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't even do that today. No. And the things we would say to each other, I remember I had a series of Patsy Cline imitators, and one was dyslexic, you know, I'm Gavin Abbey's Rams. And then another one was Filipino. We couldn't do that stuff. We couldn't do that stuff today. No. 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 We well, the drag them. queens, we could. Yeah, that We were far ahead of our time with that. Yeah. It yeah. was a very... It gave right. We had transgender people on a lot, but I, I keep. I also keep thinking about my life back then, and I'm wondering if the lifestyle I lived, you know, women I went out with and things like that, today I wouldn't get somebody coming along and saying, "Oh, he acted inappropriately towards me." Did you ever know me to act inappropriately towards a woman? No, never. 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 Uh, never. You know. I never heard you scream at you know a woman. I never heard you, uh, never. Yeah, I never grabbed them. I never played you know. Yeah, unlike Trump, who said you know if you're a star, just yeah, grab them by, by the yeah by the by the mm -hmm. stuff. But you know, I just I, I just think about those days and go, you know, I keep wondering if anybody wanted to go back and get any kind of goods on me, could they? And I can't think of anything. Yeah, you know? I don't. We were uh, edgy. We were the very show edgy. was edgy. So, the show was edgy. Uh, it was always. I always said it was kind of like you walk over to the edge of the cliff and you look down. Yeah, <laughs> but you don't tumble. You don't tumble. And, you don't fall off the cliff. The job is not not to fall off the cliff. I think one time I I said the job is is not to uh, uh, fall off the tightrope. You know. I think that's an apt description. And I remember we got in trouble with, we had Sam Kennison on, and Sam Kennison was, he was brilliant, mm -hmm. but he was, um, he, he rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, especially the gay community. Well, the gay community, yeah. this is a great story, by the way. Yeah, you were you there. Were, yeah, because I remember Glad, was it? Was Glad. Glad. Yeah, was mad at me, up. was mad at me, not because I had said anything anti-gay, which I never would. No. You know, I, because I've, I've always been, 
uh, my whole life I've known gay people and it just has always been part of my life. Uh, and I always consider myself kind of a friend of the gay community in San Francisco, even though I wasn't gay, but I was hedging, I was hedging my bets. Maybe someday I might decide to be and then they'll be really good to me. <laughs> but anyway, um, and I've gone this far and I'm still not gay, but you know. Uh, yeah, but the day is young. The day is, the day is still young. Uh, and but anyway, wh where was I? Oh yeah, so um, uh, we uh, I I just simply defend. I said something def in defense of Sam Kinison in some kind of interview or something. And what they were wanted was a meeting with the station to discuss my behavior in defending Sam Kinison. Right, and we had that meeting. Which remember, uh, you know, they weren't accusing me of being anti-gay or anything like that. And they come in. And we have a meeting, it's you and me and our general manager, Ed Cramp, and our program director, Richard Sands, and we're all sitting there while the women's committee, it felt like, you know, from some Christian organization walks in the door, only here it's glad. And yeah. They're, and they're sitting on the other side of the table with a tape recorder, and they said, let me play you some things that Sam Kinison has said. And they play this track. And it's all out of context. There's no stuff before the joke or after the joke. It's just the joke, the punchline. Mm -hmm. And I remember everybody in the room on our side of the table was having a hard time not laughing. You and I were sitting next to each other. Yeah. I mean, the general side. manager is going, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, finally, I'm, they're through with their little yeah. presentation. And I said, well, let me just tell you what I think. I think you're a bunch of Nazis. I said, yeah. I think you're a bunch of people who are censoring somebody for what they're saying in a comedy act. You're playing it out of context. This whole thing is a sham and you can go fuck yourselves. And I got up, walked to the door and slammed it shut behind me. I remember that part. I don't and I could that. hear the gasp in the other room. There was gasping, yes. And I don't remember you saying, go fuck yourself. I just remember I, you. I won't put up with, I wouldn't put up with that. And I, yeah. I knew the general manager couldn't put it in these terms, but I'm this mm -hmm. wacky talk show host and I could, okay? Yes. And I, and, and I, you know, I told them off. I said, I don't care if you're, if you're, I said, I've always been a friend of the gay community. I've always, always. been sympathetic towards the gay community. I've had gay comics on my show, some of which you wouldn't know because they are still closeted and mm -hmm. don't want to say they are gay. Um, but I said, you know, you're, you're coming after a, a friend of the gay community here, and right. that's wrong, and, you can, and I said, you can go fuck yourself, and I walked out the door. And uh, I, that was my proudest moment. Yeah, I Because I that. wasn't gonna put up with that. You know, mm -hmm. just because it was yeah. a, it was glad, you know, and later on I had got into some kind of thing where I, I had a contest or something which I could win $5,000 if I won it to my favorite charity. And I gave mm -hmm. half of it to glad, you know. Yeah, when uh, the, the thing was, I mean, they were, that's a dangerous cusp, what they were um, protesting on, yeah. because it's like you, not even anything you said, it's because you didn't put down Sam Kennison. So yeah. they were wanting to buy your opinion, I guess. Not buy, that's, but you know, That's play. correct. So anyway, you know, I mean, uh, we, th those are just some of the wonderful times we've had. I mean, there, <laughs> there are more we could, you know. Uh, she's known, uh, during that period of time, she knew every girlfriend that I had, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, when we, before we went to Greece, I called your former girlfriend, because she and I, over the years, have you know, occasionally texted, mm -hmm. and I always got along with her. Yeah. And she gave me all kinds of uh, tips for Greece. We were thinking of moving there yeah. for a, um, six months, but yeah. So yeah. I knew all of them. Yeah, pretty much. yeah, yeah. She uh, she she loves that country. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and it it was mind blowing. I mean, I've heard the phrase "layering of civilizations," but we were in Ephesus, and it was so amazing the attention that they had given to excavation and, and restoring, restoration. It just blew your head off, yeah. it did mine. Restoration is a very important thing to do. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm looking at the clock here. We got about a minute left. Uh, um, 
Any gigs you're playing lately? Uh, where? where you... <laughs> yes, I'll be playing uh, Croatia next month oh, and oh, really? Venice. We're going there. And yeah. then uh, Ibiza in August. So I will be thinking of you. Yeah. And, and, and so you. Our time with... how, now, how old is your husband in comparison to you? He is uh, six years old. Six, six years. Six years old? Uh. Six years old. <laughs> So we get along. We have the same level of maturity. No, he's six years older. Oh, okay, good. Is he working yeah. or is he retired? He's retired. Oh. He and he's he's the one who's been. I was in radio and spent all my money. He has actually invested well, so we can you know travel, you can travel and do all that. Let's do this yeah. again, okay? I would love to. I was so excited. Let's do it again. Stay there. <laughs> Stay there. I'm just signing us off here, ladies and gentlemen. That's Lori Thompson. Bye, Lori. Love you. Bye. Love you. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah. <laughs> There's my old pal, Lori Thompson. Boy, that, that I, I, people have really enjoyed those. So I'm going to call her or write, write to her in the next couple of days and say, let's do, let's do another couple of them. Because uh, you people really seem to enjoy it. But there is nobody waiting to do the show tonight. Huh. See? I don't know. Well, I'll give it a couple of minutes of people for people to call. And if they don't call, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll sign off early. I have no, uh, n no compunctions about signing off early. Uh, well, anyway, here's Alan. So, Alan... Alan is always good for a quick laugh here. Hold on a second. There he goes, and uh, there he is. Hello there, Alan. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm red today. What, what, <clears throat> how, did oh. that, how did that happen? i got to change my lighting in here. i got to get lighting on either side or something. Yeah, I what, what, so what, 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 why are you red? I have no idea. Do I look red to you? Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. It looks like you got really mad or something, and you know. No. Oh. Well, you know, uh, you can buy yourself a couple of these lights here for uh, about two hundred and fifty bucks. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll ask Bill. Yeah, I, 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 I it's kind of funny because I don't, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm exactly sold on these lights. They're called Elgados. Yeah, I've heard of them. And they're, you know. Overall, they're pretty good, but they're expensive. They're more expensive than other lights, all right? But yeah. what happens is they work off the Wi-Fi. And if your Wi-Fi kind of goes wonky or something, you can't yeah. turn them on. Take off my hat. I'm not as red. You, you know, well, <laughs> don't worry about it. Put your hat on. Yeah. You know. There's only, there's only room enough for one bald person on this program. <laughs> so, I, so uh, you know, like I, I was listening to the show and listening to you talking to Lori Thompson, a voice from the past from San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. And she talked about uh, Don Blue. I know him as Dr. Donald D or Dr. Don Blue or something. No, 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 no. On KFRC. No, I listened no, no, to no, 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 no. You got the wrong one. No. Oh. That's Don. We're talking about Don Blue, B L U E U. You're oh. thinking of Doctor Don Rose. Oh God. Okay. But Don Blue, I listened to KFRC all the time when I was younger. Sorry. Oh, well, well that, and was, that, that was, Don Blue was on that, right? No. Oh, he wasn't on KFRC. No, no. I I can't I'm trying to remember what radio station he was associated with for the longest time. And uh, but no, not KFRC. No, KFRC was Doctor Don Blue, I believe. Okay. You know. That's but, what I just said. Yeah. Doctor Don Blue, KFRC. Yeah. And but, you said no, that was Don Rose. Okay. Anyhow. Yeah. Here comes here, come, here comes Kevin. We have nothing but beards on the show tonight. Yeah. It's. Um, but anyway, I uh, I'm a little out of it. I'll tell you why. I went to um, Marjorie said, "Oh, guess what? We can get the the uh, flu shot, the uh, COVID shot. There's now a new COVID shot. This is number six, okay? 
And so we got the um, the. Um, what are you doing? Why have you got the mustache in there? I have no idea. That's been in there for uh, weeks. I don't know how to get it out. I didn't. I didn't touch anything. Oh, what you do is go up uh, up to your see your your little shield up there, the green shield. Yeah, I'm on that right now. Okay, yeah. then then hit the wheel, hit the wheel. Okay. And then you go over, and it says. Um, background and effects and you okay. see where it says uh, uh video yeah. f let's see here video filters there we go see yeah. see where it says video filters oh yeah yeah you yeah, want to yeah. you want to click none hmm. okay is I'm that all right for you because if you yeah. don't click none you get stuff like uh, let you me see here we, like this you know did you just click none? Yeah. Well, why isn't it? Uh, why isn't it doing that? What is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, on none. Hmm. Studio. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll get Come rid of none. I'll get rid of oh, that. Here we go. Beard and mustache. It's a, another thing. There we go. There you go. It's gone. Good. Now yeah. I'm even lighter. Yeah. Blurry. Yeah. So okay, right. I'll, I'll live with it. Right. So anyway, um, no. So anyway, so so Marjorie said, uh, 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 it, uh, it, they say we can get our sixth shot, right? So she, we get on the right aid and we sign up for it, and it, we could do it the same day. So we went up there, and I got my flu shot, but I'm not feeling great tonight. Flu, flu shot. COVID nineteen is a flu. Okay. 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 Yeah. I, okay. You, you want me to specifically shot. say COVID nineteen? No, no, your COVID shot. I was thinking it was late in the season to get a flu shot. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not feeling well. I didn't feel well Monday night. Yeah. After I got my shot. Yeah, I just feel like a little day, puny. Cold. You know, a little puny. Uh, yeah, I but, get that after every vaccine. Yeah, but it's worth it. You know. Oh well, yeah, sure it's please. worth it. You know, I can't think of anything that has been better for me than that shot for saving my life. So, yeah. what yeah. the hell? Uh, how are you tonight, Jeff? Good. I was listening to Lori, and that's why I didn't sign up in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I was just listening to her. Yeah. Very good. And uh, Kevin, how are you tonight? Okay, how are you? I'm okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Kind of weird right now. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Your sound is kind of weird. Am, am I doing? It's nothing on this end. I don't think you sound yeah. fine on this end, Kevin. Okay. No, it's this end. Do I sound fine on this end? Yeah, yeah. it's just a little muffled on this end. I, I don't know if it's me or what. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, we could sure stand to have more people call us tonight. Uh, but t t Thursdays. What is it with Thursdays? Huh? You always say that. Yeah, I know, but Thursdays always seem to be light, and mm. I, I I don't I don't know why, but anyway, so um, yeah, there was Lori again. I'm gonna I'm gonna call her up and get do more with her. I'm gonna do more with Farnham, and I've got a couple other people I want to get on, uh, but I won't I won't have you be my producer to go get them, uh, Alan. I have no idea what that means, but uh, well, I got a note from uh, from uh, from Jack today, saying that uh, you were worried that I was bothered by the fact that you were doing that. No, no, it, I it, just wanted you're okay, and you gave it to me last night. Yeah, I mean it's fine. Taking him a week to get around to asking, but that's okay. It's it's finally uh, it's finally uh, 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 you know I mean I I don't care <laughs> you know. I mean, okay. I didn't know. I mean, I think it. I just said you seem to be uncomfortable with the idea. I am. Yeah. So you know. I, I have no. I've talked about it with Bill, and he says, you know, you kind of need to be trained to do that. Said, well, yeah. it isn't a matter of being trained as much as having done it. You know, all it takes is a very gutsy person. You know, who just goes out of their way to get people for somebody. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I, uh, uh, but I would never ask any of my audience to do it. You know, no. I think that would be imposing on them. So 
That's why yeah. I don't. Why I don't do it that way. But uh, it just seems strange to me. I, I need a more clear understanding from Jack what he wants. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, good <laughs> luck with that one. Yeah. No yeah. Kidding. Yeah. Uh, so anyway. Um, I have a lot of patience. I don't know what there is to talk about tonight. Uh, the Proud Boys got found guilty. That's good. You know. Somebody was saying today that, you know, they, they, they found the Proud Boys guilty, folks, in case you don't know what we're talking about. Um, they found them guilty of, uh, uh, hold on a second, I just want to do something sedation, here. Yeah. Huh? Guilty of sedation. I, uh, sedition. Sedition. You didn't know, and I, and I said it wrong. No, not okay. sedation. No, not sedation. Wait a minute, let me do something here. I just want to, I just want to change my. Uh, there we go. Okay, now are we fine? Okay, we're fine. I did. I was a little off. I was a little out of sync. I think. Yeah, there we go. We're a little better now. Anyway, um, somebody was mentioning this today. I can't remember where. Some news show or something like that. And it made a lot of sense. If they found these guys guilty of sedition and attacking the Capitol and all of that, okay? These are just the people who did the president's bidding, all right? So why aren't they going out and charging the president? Why are people waiting on that? You know? Um, isn't it time they went out and, and did something about him? They just sit around and sit around and sit around and Futs around? Yep. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I don't know what the answer is. Turn your mic down a little bit, uh, Alan. We'll get you together tonight here. Anyway, uh, let me see here. I wanna, uh, I'm want to. i trying to think. Is there anything we want to talk about? No? Well, I'll see you all later, okay? <laughs> um, no, I just... Uh, I just uh, I just think that if they found these guys guilty of sedition, they were the bottom rung of this whole ladder. Okay? The top of it is Trump, and he should be charged with it. You, I, they, were, they went back to that speech he was giving, you know, before they all stormed the Capitol. And I watched that speech, and I'm going, he's inciting people with this speech. You know? Come on, nail him, charge him. What are you waiting for? We always talk about where was I when. And the, well, I can tell you exactly where I was. Where were you? Said, huh? Let's all, I'm going to march down with you, and we're going to go down to the Capitol. And I can tell you exactly where I was. Mm -hmm. I was on 101 North, just south of San Jose, heading up to my mom's. Yeah. And... I almost drove off the side of the road because number one, I said, Oh bullshit. You're not going, you're just going to tell everybody else to go. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I was up taking my mom to doctor's appointments up in Burlingame. And I was watching, you know, as you walk through the hospital, they got TVs on and stuff like that. And I'm watching all that crap going on. And it was just, uh, it was like a 9-11. It was like a, a big earthquake. It was just like one of those events that never go away. It'll be an event that you'll always know where you were when you saw it happen. Exactly. You know? And the way that they seem to be treating it is, well, you know, whatever. We'll get to it. Yeah. And it was a lot more than that. I mean, look how long these guys have gotten or taken to be put to trial and prosecuted. Mm -hmm. It's what, what, two and a half years now? Something like that, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, what, yeah. January 6th, so, yeah. you know. 2020, was it? 2020. Yeah, and here we are in 23. Actually, they 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 pretty well got nailed uh, in a short matter of time. A lot of times cases like this go on for several years before the actual trial and then, you know, 
But they probably yeah, well, they had to catch them first and all that other crap. But... Yeah, but I mean, they, I don't think they could get, you know, they had the lawyers uh, to defend them that people, a lot of people would have. And so I don't think that there was a lot of the stalling kind of thing. I mean, this, this, all this stuff with Trump takes forever because he does every stalling tactic he can possibly sure. do. The Look newest thing they're good. trying in, in the New York case is they're trying to get it sent over to a federal court, which right. is ridiculous. It's not a federal case. No, but they're going to try. They're going to try. You they're know why? Try. It's a stall tactic, exactly. Correct. And then there's that lawyer he's got, his new lawyer, the, the one who doesn't look like a mob lawyer. He looks like the mob. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, who is this guy? Where did he come from? Is he the lawyer that will work for free for Trump? Because Trump ain't paying. Trump isn't going to pay him, you know? Why are you blurry now? Uh, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out, too. I'm going to disconnect and reconnect. Uh, uh, okay. Like Tony, and take a, a micro cloth to your lens there. Nah, no, that's not it. Really. He's he's actually blurring out. Well, there he goes. Now there's just three of us. There okay. he goes. Where where are all you people tonight? You know? Well, there's a Warriors game on, but they've kind of taken over the game, so there's not much to watch, really. Uh, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Is is Brian a Warriors fan? Oh yeah. Oh okay. That's where he is. Okay. So he's got. He is. I can guarantee that. He... I was watching it too, but they're taking over. I'm trying to find the remote so I can find the score, but the room here is in such a mess I can't find the remote. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, there. That's clear. See, it just cleared up. Okay. Here comes Charlie Wallace. I thought maybe he had like baseball tonight or softball or whatever that game is that he he coaches. Hello there, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, I just got off the softball field. Really? Oh, okay. All righty. Well, I'm glad you took your time out to call us. Let's see. I made okay, chemis a chemistry joke, and there was no reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you find these things? This here, there. there. And I, I would love to see the shirts you turn down. <laughs> Where is a shirt that says something nobody ever asked me? Oh, hate cops? Yeah, next call time you need help, call a crackhead. Oh, that's an old line, you know. And I called a crackhead once because I saw that shirt, and the crackhead immediately stopped the burglary. It was amazing. There you go. <laughs> In spite of the fact that he was high on crack, he just immediately took care of it all. So. Knocked the guy's teeth out, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or one of his own by accident, you know. The last one. But, oh, yeah. uh, but uh, anyway, um, so I, um, uh, you know, so anyway, the Proud Boys are going to jail. They could go to jail for up to, t what, 20 years, I think, is the... Right, or yeah. yeah. Good. And, um, you know. I I'm, think they it, should go make them polish the banisters at the Capitol. Yeah, well, what, yeah. what they were saying now is that they're really mad at Trump because they said that he led them astray. Yeah, right. And, the, no, they say the reason they did this was because Trump said to do it. In fact, didn't he at one point, there was one place where he said, Proud Boys, if you're listening... And I think he singled them out, said, Proud Boys, if you're listening, you know, I'm with you or stand whatever. Stand down and stand by. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Stand down and stand by. Yeah, that was the one of them, yeah. One of his speeches. Well, you know, I mean, come on. What more do you need? Nail the bastard. You know, it's just amazing to me. Just amazing to me. But um, um, so, uh, you know, uh, it's... Uh, I am so out of it tonight because of that the the, the, the pill the uh, shot rather, and my arm is killing me. Oh really? Mine too. Yeah. First time in six shots that my arm has ever hurt. You know why? Not every shot is the same, and they all have a different viscosity and a different substance and whatever. And this one. In a different location in your arm than last time. 
Yeah. yeah, and it depends on who gives it to you too. I asked the I asked the uh, the uh, pharmacist who was giving us a shot. I said, "Does anybody know if the first two shots we got are still working?" <laughs> you, you've heard the end. They're not, Kevin. No, they. I heard that they're only good for about eight months. Yeah, that's what I heard. Worn off. Yeah. Well, I think these new ones are a little more little longer I think no, so the bivalent is half of the old one and half of the new Omicron that's the main difference yeah yeah but now we, we're we're on uh, we're doing uh, what do you call it uh, bivalent it's the only one that no bivalent now, yeah. no but I'm talking about the company I'm using the uh, Pfizer Moderna Fi we're doing Pfizer so we, we did do Moderna but they switched us over to Pfizer because they said you could, you know. Okay. So, uh, and I, I don't know. Have they okayed the Moderna? Oh, sure. Well, no, not oh, no, sure. Because each know. of the, each of these companies give it, you know, to the uh, to the uh, what's the comp What's the organization again? See how uh, out of it I am tonight. FDA, FDA or CDC, F whatever. Uh, CDC. <laughs> And the CDC then okays it, uh, but each company gives it to them. So I think the one they they went for was the was the uh, Pfizer, but who knows? Anyway, I have the yeah. Moderna was approved a month later in 2021, early 2021. So yeah, well, the first shot, two shots, well, four shots I got were all uh, Moderna, Moderna. Sure. and and I heard it was the better of the two actually. All five of mine have been Moderna. Really? Even the most recent ones? Yeah. Well, I haven't gotten it. I got to get the second bivalent. Yeah. But the first one I All got last mine, October was Moderna. Oh, mine have been Pfizer. I own stock in Pfizer, so I thought, why not? Well, this is the bivalent. Uh, this is the uh, the sixth shot I've gotten total. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get that. I just haven't done it. Yeah, well, yeah. This is, it, it, so it hurt your arm too, huh? Yeah, Monday. Yeah. Monday, I got it. Yep. Yeah, so I'm a fan. I'm feeling just a little puny, you know, kind of like uh, not a hundred percent. But anyway, so where's our friend Phil tonight? I figure he would call tonight, but oh, he called. He's tired. He's gonna take a nap. Oh, hmm. really? At six o'clock. What an old man he's become, right? Oh shit, huh? Right. I mean, I, if I say his name three times, will he appear? Is it like like Beetlejuice, you know. <laughs> so I never I never asked us anybody seen any good movies lately or TV shows or anything like that. Because we just watched this thing. And I don't know why we watched it. Eight episodes on Netflix, uh, and it was terrible. Uh, it, the Diplomat. Oh really? I haven't seen it, that yet. Yeah, it's it, it avoid. It, you don't need it, you know. You can avoid it. Uh, it's not very good. Hey uh, Vernon. Huh? Hey Vernon, how you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, so I had a friend. Uh, we I had to write her on this. Um, uh, a friend of Marjorie's by the name of uh, uh, Paula, who calls the Monday show. Mm -hmm. And she said on Monday they were going to go see this movie Air about the about the Nikes and how they came to be and so on and so forth. And well. directed yeah. by Ben Affleck and has Ben Affleck in it and a bunch of other people. Um, and she was going to go see it. I immediately told Marjorie last night. I said, call her quick and tell her not to go. And Marjorie said, well, is it because it's bad? It's supposed to be bad? I said, no, it's supposed to be very good. But they're showing it on Amazon on the 12th. Oh, for free, yeah. Yeah, so don't go see Air, folks. Wait oh, for good. it. Because most of you have Amazon anyway because you have Amazon Prime because that's what you... Yes, Vernon, what were you going to say? I have Amazon Prime. Yeah, well, you automatically get it if you, you yeah. know. Yeah. You get Amazon Video, Amazon Music, it's all included. M music isn't... Yep. No, music you got to pay extra for. You get some of it, a little bit of I it. I listen to Amazon Music all day long. Yeah, but you but if you want everything they've got musically. 
Oh, I don't know. You have yeah, to you pay nine dollars. Like mine's like an oldies radio station. I don't know. Yeah, but it, it, but, but uh, it. Um, you know what I got to do? I got pretty soon. I'm going to go to Amazon. I'm going to order something. They're going to say you don't have a uh, subscription really? because my subscription was piggybacked onto Shecky's. In Ooh. other words, if you have Amazon, you can put somebody else on Amazon on your account. So he just said a long time ago. This was back in 2000. He probably paid it yearly, and so you're probably good until the oh, end. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I'm good until it runs out. But then when it runs out, i got to go on Marjorie's. So, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, I do it. I do my own. I'd pay for it. But why if I don't have to? You know, so. So I, have, I use Citibank Banking, yeah. and they pay for Amazon Prime or Costco, um, either one yearly, as long as you put it on their little debit card. What, what 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 is this again? Instead of using a Mastercard or a Visa to pay for Amazon Prime or yeah. Costco uh, subscription, you know, the, the, to go into Costco, uh, you just put it on your debit card and they'll pay you back. Oh really? Oh, that's Citibank. Uh, that's yeah. good. One of the good things. Well, the one I'm this. thinking about that I'm, I, I, it's kind of, I'm waiting to see what happens, is I get uh, HBO Max as part of my AT&T every month. It's just like, really? and I didn't realize that until a couple of months ago and I look, was on when I was on the AT&T side and they said, oh, click here so you can get HBO Max. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I got the top of line AT&T on. Are you ta I'm, I'm talking about your phone? Yes. Oh shit, I don't get HBO. Just go to the AT&T site Okay. And 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 on there you will see something about HBO Max. Oh, yep. Yeah. I get HBO Max on Hulu, but I'm thinking about dropping Hulu because you can sign up for HBO Max on Prime. Well, you can. Yeah. I wouldn't sign up for HBO Max or any of those things on these various companies like Roku, Amazon. All of them will offer to sell you HBO Max. Uh, uh, what Paramount, uh, any one of these, Paramount Plus. Uh, and Netflix, but why do it? Why, just just subscribe to them. You're not they're gonna, they're not saying, hey, we're going to take ten bucks off of it. It's the same price as if you go right to them and do it. I'd rather just go to the company and buy it. You know, um, screw Roku. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Prime wanted to sell me Paramount Plus, but I've already got the Paramount Plus. App on my yeah, TV, but so I bet Paramount there are a lot Plus of people Facebook. who made the mistake and have subscribed twice to something because they didn't know that they, you know, because they kind of sneak it in on you. If you go over to Amazon, they have all the various services available. If you go to Roku, they have all the services available. If you go to Hulu, the same thing, okay? Uh, and I just, you know, I just don't want to have to I, I just I just would rather but anyway so I so I got AT&T through AT&T I got uh, HBO Max well on the 23rd of this month HBO Max becomes Max because Discovery who aren't the brightest bulbs in the business thinks this is a good idea that you completely wipe out a brand name like HBO that is almost wow. as synonymous with TV as Coca-Cola is with soft drinks, okay? Yeah. Wow. So they're changing it to Max. Well, you know what HBO stands for? Home, Home box, box office. office. Home box office. Right. right. One of the first eight. satellite. It was one of the first yeah. satellite subscription services ever. The first. A Alex used to say all the time, "Hey, Beastmasters on." Hey, Beastmasters yeah, on. You You're do. right. <laughs> But HBO, um, I was one of the first people to get HBO. It, it, the first place it was on was like in some place down in Pennsylvania. They were testing it down there. The second place it came to was my neighborhood in New York. Oh, wow. And I, I subscribed. I must have been one of the first ever to subscribe to HBO. And I thought it was a wonderful thing. Hey, I'm getting all these. I mean, it was movies that were a year old, but... You couldn't get them anywhere else, you know. Well, 
somebody started the movie channel out of his garage up in Maine. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, and so... Every night at 8 o'clock, he ran a feature movie. But it was only one movie, once a night, started at 8 o'clock each day. Oh, okay. I, I don't remember the movie channel. Well, I remember the, uh, the, the movie channels, TMC. I'm trying to remember what that was exactly, that version of it. Is it still around? No. I think so. The movie channel? Yeah. yeah. It, might, it might be called something else now. I don't know. TMC, I think. It TMC, yeah, yeah. I think it's still around. Yeah, okay. But anyway, the point is, is that I don't know what's going to happen now that they, I got a thing from them saying, oh, well, you know, Max, HBO Max becomes Max. You don't have to do anything. All your, your, you know, your current thing is blah, 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 and it's all going to move over there, and it's going to be seamless, and that's what they all say. And, and you know, I, I'm wondering if at some point they're going to go, well, you know, this deal we had with AT&T. AT&T had it because AT&T owned HBO. So what's going to happen to that? You know. So is there an HBO app that I can download to my smart TV and just subscribe to that by itself? Well, you can get HBO Max, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You just download it, and then it won't let you on until you sign up for it. Yeah. You know, but then you subscribe to it, and you know, give me your credit card and tell them how you're going to pay for it, and uh, you know, you get it. Yeah, my son got Apple TV because he signed up for the new but here's, iPhone. But here's here's yeah, I, yeah, I, think they, I think uh, I think they'll give it to you as well. I Apple. have. I have Apple TV. Well, Apple TV, you can get HBO Max. That's another yeah. one. But I have HBO free. Uh, I have Apple free. I have Showtime that's been folded into my Paramount Plus without them raising the price <laughs> of Paramount Plus, although Paramount Plus just raised theirs $2 a month. Uh, but... Nevertheless, most of these services, one way or another, I'm either getting free or for less than you would normally pay for it. But here's the thing they did over at HBO. You know, if I got a show on HBO and they're sending it through in 4K, then you get it in 4K, right? Not once they become H once they become Max. When they become Max, if you want to get 4K, you have to pay nineteen ninety five a month for the service so I'm saying screw that you know there's not that big a difference anyway so do you think Hulu is worth keeping what oh, yeah I love Hulu Hulu I love Hulu well I have okay. Hulu I have the Hulu um, I have all the TV stations mm -hmm. through Hulu yeah. too and it's pretty yeah, true you can get the local stations and all that yeah you can get that on any of the streaming services what you can get the local TV channels and uh, sports and all that from any of the streaming services. Well, not any of the streaming services. You can't get it through Netflix. You can't get it through. Oh, um, uh, okay. You, you can't get it that. through Amazon. Hulu, see, Hulu is the only one of the normal streaming companies that actually. YouTube, uh, YouTube has it as well. Yeah, but that's not one of the normal streaming services. I mean, you can get you can get YouTube without even paying for it, you know. But if you want to if you want to get all those stations, all your local stations and everything else, plus the DVR in the cloud, yeah, they got a DVR in the cloud. Well, so does Hulu. So does Hulu. So, you know, the Hulu service isn't much different. Um, the reason I got it, oh, another reason I got it, is that you pay for the Hulu service, and guess what you get for free. Disney Plus and ESPN Plus. Well, you pay extra. Huh? No, you don't. Well, I've got Hulu and I don't have Disney no, Plus. You, no, you have to have the Hulu uh, Plus service. In other words, where okay. you're getting all those TV stations and the local okay. stations and so on, which cost me about uh, 90 bucks a month or something. But I get, you know, I get Disney Plus and I get, you know. ESPN so. Plus. I've got the bundle with ESPN Plus, Disney Plus, and Hulu. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I get my local stations through but, YouTube TV. So yeah, but the, but they're all raising their prices. Yep. 
And that bothers me because I, I think they're getting to be a little bit on the, uh, on the greedy side, all right? Because there are so many of these different streaming Your services. Your audio went out. My audio went oh. out? Yeah, we can't hear I, you. Can you hear me? I hear it. You can hear I me. Can hear it. I hear it. I hear it. No audio. I hear You're, audio fine. I You're hear having everybody's fine. gone. You're hearing problems. You're having problems there. Unless it's me. I can't hear anybody. It's got to be you. Everybody else said Yeah, we can. Everybody else can hear everybody. Can you hear me? It's you. Yeah, hear you. It's you. you. Yes, it's I can you. hear me. It's I you. can't hear anybody. You, 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 me. you. Yeah. Um, I can oh. hear you. Can you hear us now? It must be me. Yeah, it's got to be you. Side. He had problems getting on, too, with hearing. Yeah. Well. Okay, it must be me. I'm going to hang up and call back. Okay, do that. It's you. It's me. <laughs> it's me. I'll hang up and call back. Clean okay. Screen. So anyway, what they're doing? Oh, is, oh you know what? Oh, this is goddamn. What? What? Got to plug the microphone in. We still hear you. <laughs> oh, the mic works fine. You just can't hear it. We got to oh, plug the headphones in. Too. Sorry. What the hell? Hey, bang! Our listenership will probably go up every time well, we have technical we problems. To... It goes up. We all need to have pen and paper just for all moments like this. Right? Yeah, but but <laughs> I do. I wrote AT and T, HBO Max. So no, after I get off the show, I can look for it. Yeah, but here here's the thing that you know. I mean that for them to suddenly start raising their prices, especially with the current economy, yeah, is not a good idea. You know, and it's hey, it's, it's capitalism. Hmm. It's capitalism. Well, it's capitalism, but it's not smart capitalism. Can you hear us? Kevin. Can you hear us, Kevin? Yep. No, you can hear us now. Oh, okay. Good. Well, it pisses it's me off the Fed keeps raising the interest rates on us to, to, because of inflation. Yeah, I don't understand that. Jacking up the price. You know what? I don't care because I don't have any outstanding loans. Well, well, nice and and yeah. well, that's fine, but I still don't understand why raising the interest rates is going to somehow improve the economy. It slows the economy it slows down. Slows it down. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's don't, what they say. It's but my mom's house too. But do you, all I know is I charged up stuff based on one interest rate, and without me doing anything, all of a sudden they've added five points to that interest rate. It is okay. killing me. Pay it off. Yeah, I. I mean, I don't owe any. Thing to a credit card owe company or anything. Twenty thousand dollars to pay it off, Alan. I'll send you a check tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you got so much money. Buy my mom's house. Uh, okay, yeah, no problem. <laughs> At least that's here in the Bay Area. But I, I, you know, I don't understand that one. I mean, I don't see how it's helping the economy. Apparently, it isn't. Yeah, because it doesn't be affected. It slows down Not economic yet. activity because it costs more for money. That's right. Yeah, but don't you want people to use money and to spend money and to, you know? Yeah, but not extraordinarily because that's what causes inflation. That's right. Yeah. You know what I think causes inflation? And I'm Greedy not. Greedy bastards. Huh? Greedy bastards. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I like, for instance, you go to the store and let's say uh, bananas now are uh, a dollar more than they were. Bananas. Yeah, a, a, a dollar more than they were last month. Okay, why is it? It's not because bananas suddenly became rare, or bananas cost more to grow. It's just they saw that everybody's saying, "Oh, the prices are going up," so they figure, ah, "Well, just jack the prices up." What the hell? It's supply you know, and demand. So many, all of a sudden, there's shortages of things. One of my favorite stories about inflation is how McDonald's got as big as they did. Back in the 1970s, remember the mad cow disease scare? Yeah. And the price of beef was way up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And McDonald's raised the prices of their hamburgers from 19 cents to 99 cents. And that only lasted three or four years, and then the price of beef came back down. But do you think McDonald's lowered the prices with their hamburgers? No. You know, I often I often said that a lot of these companies took their cue from dope dealers. Oh, uh, do you, do you, do you people who uh, how many here do marijuana or have done marijuana in their lifetime? Right? Mm -hmm. Do you ever remember that all of a sudden 
the price of marijuana would go up because there was a drought. And there was truly yeah. a drought. It was hard for them to get the marijuana. Well, when the drought was over, did they ever drop the price back down to what it was? No. That whole philosophy is the same philosophy that McDonald's used for beef. Yep. Right? Okay. It's just so, basic. So let me get yep. this right. You're charging your marijuana deliveries to your credit card, and you're now paying more. No, no. I'm not saying I'm not. <laughs> I always paid cash for my pot. And as a matter of fact, I never had a dealer that took credit cards. Right. Okay. No yeah. paper trail. The last time I can, smoked marijuana, this, I was in high school. In these weed shops, I don't think you can do a credit. You got to pay it with cash. Do you have to pay cash? For, uh, I don't know. Do you? A lot of them. Uh, yeah. I, I, is there, it, the problem is that federally, marijuana is still illegal. Yeah. That, that federally. One drug. So therefore, banks yep. were not allowed to take marijuana money. That's from right, these yeah. from these perfectly yeah, legal dispensaries in st states like Colorado, eventually yep. they solve the problem by not putting their money in a bank, but in a credit union. Credit union, yeah. And credit unions could take their money without being jeopardizing their relationship federally. So, what ha what's happening now is the same thing. I think that the reason why maybe there's cash in a lot of these dispensaries is because the credit card companies won't do business with them for fear that the government is going to come down on them. But Federal government. Federal yeah. government, yeah. So, you know. Speaking of federal government, did you guys talk about earlier the Cowboy decision? Yeah, trial? yeah, yeah, we did. Um, but it, let me talk to you for a moment just about Marijuana. I mean, I haven't really smoked marijuana that much in the last 15 years. I just got tired of it, okay? Um, plus, it would make me hungry, and then I'd get fat. You know, a whole bunch of things, right? Uh, you know, I, somebody once said, what's the worst thing that can happen if you smoke pot? And I said, obesity. Mm -hmm. You know, obesity and pregnancy were the two bad side effects of it's marijuana. Like eating McDonald's. Huh? It's like eating McDonald's. It makes you fat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But anyway, so I uh, I didn't uh, I I didn't um, um, I always but I, there was always a kind of a social thing about marijuana that was nice, you know, uh, and it was the uh, you know the passing of the joint back and forth and. Everybody, you know, and passing it to somebody else. The most common word being used when you're smoking pot with friends was ear. <laughs> ear. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of nice, you know, but all that has changed because my friends in California sent us a vape and the cartridges that go in the vape. Oh. That doesn't have the same fun as rolling a joint and lighting it. You know, it was a nice slow. And the brown stickiness on your fingers. Yeah, but, but or even when you burnt your fingers when it got down to the very end. You know, uh, you, you knew it was time to roll a new one when you went ow. You know, but the social aspect. That's, what the of, little, that's where the roach clips came. From. I was yeah. just going to say, yeah. in high school, we had roach clips. Or yep. you could you just uh, Marjorie always just used uh, paper uh, what do you call it? hair 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 pins hair pins yeah yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. um, I just you know the, the the vape is it's nice I mean I I smoke some pot every night to put me to sleep indica is very good for that and so I take a puff off of it. and in the middle of the night if I wake up and I can't go back to sleep I have it lying by the side of the bed and I puff on it. But the vape doesn't have a social aspect to it, you know? Uh, yes. Uh, Clarification. Mm -hmm. In the first part of your sentence, you haven't smoked marijuana in 15 years. But every night you take a little bit. Oh, oh okay. The clarification well, is you don't, you, don't, you don't buy the loose marijuana anymore. Well, the, the fact is I started doing this about a couple of months ago. Right. And it puts me to sleep. So right? we can blame Damien for this, huh? Huh? So we can blame Damien? Oh, because he, he always vaped. But he vaped tobacco because he thought it was better for him. I don't know if it is or it isn't. If you vape tobacco as opposed to uh, 
smoking it, you know. By the way, there was nothing there was nothing sociable social about smoking cigarettes, you know. Uh, except for having somebody on the street go, "Can I bum a cigarette off of you?" I remember the days when you did they did that and you go, oh, "Okay, here." You gave him a cigarette. You don't do that anymore. That cigarette costs like a dollar or something like that. Some what what is it, anybody know what cigarettes cost now? I think a carton's I think like the last time I, I live saw in Kentucky they were, where they grow a lot of tobacco and I have no clue. Yeah, but I mean I think they're about ten bucks a pack or something. I think like. I saw them at twelve dollars a carton. Yeah. Oh, you mean, oh no, you're right, a pack. A pack. Ten dollars yeah. a pack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I saw somebody at a gas station paying like ninety eight bucks for a carton. Or a hundred and something for a cart. Yeah, you remember when you I bought? Went, Holy crap! Anybody here used to smoke? Yeah, I used to smoke. Yeah, I used to smoke. Never, never cigarette. And I always bought a carton. Who would buy a pack? You know, and the carton was like two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, real cheap. And you say it's like ninety nine dollars now. Something like that, because I remember they, you know, Wait. I saw them putting it on a credit card, and it was a three figure. Mm. Mm-hmm. I had so a lot of over a hundred bucks. Twelve dollars a piece. It's not about money to me. I've never smoked a cigarette. I've always smoked cigars. They're not that you you think, but they are a problem. Oh, I, I I'm not I'm not in denial. Because they don't give you lung cancer because they don't inhale. They give them. you they give you liver cancer. And lip cancer. And, or lip cancer. And because you know, what happens is what happens is the smoke goes through the mucous membrane in your mouth. And winds up in your liver. So that that's what's gotta, bad bad about gotta cigars. Die of something. Huh? Please. Gotta die of something. Talk yeah. about states rice. I had an uncle who retired from Florida and when I was younger and I, I told him I was coming down to visit, he wanted me to buy as many cartons of cigarettes as I could in Kentucky and bring them to him because the taxes were like triple in Florida. Yeah. 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 I think that's against federal law. I'm yeah, kidding. but who's going to stop I'm kidding. You? I'm kidding, Vern. Who's going to stop you just for, for carrying cigarettes across the state line? Well, I will have to say that raising the price on cigarettes did cause people to quit. You know? Um, yeah. You know? It I caused you to turn 43 it, it, and did you quit say, two years ago. Brian, did you say it caused you to quit? No, an engineer I worked with, he used to have a saying. He'd say it over and over. He said, like, something like when... When the pack went to eight, he said, if the pack goes to 80 cents, then he's quitting. And it went to that, that whatever that dollar amount was, and he quit cold. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, um, when I quit, uh, it, when I was in San Francisco, I had somebody on the air one morning who was talking about smoking cigarettes, and he gave me a breathing test. And he says, your breathing has been hampered by smoking. Oh. And it was that day I quit. I did, because I had a, a deal with myself that the day ever came that I felt that I was being hampered by smoking cigarettes and we could see the effects of it, that I would stop it. And I did. And, uh, and, and never, I haven't smoked since. You know, and I'm glad I quit then. I'd only smoked for about 20 years and apparently wasn't enough to do the damage, you know. Make a suggestion. What? Um, I mean, Kaiser just sent this out. They have something called low dose CD, CD, CT, like a CAT scan. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever smoked more than 100 cigarettes in your life, you raise your hand to go and do the CT scan, and they can find cancers ahead of time. Yeah, just 100 cigarettes? I guess that's enough to cause cancer. I don't. I, I've never even smoked. Well, I had a CT scan a while back, and I had two spots on my lung. But one was there um, in 2016. Okay. Okay. So it's not dangerous because it's not growing. Okay. And the other one was a kind of, of, of spot that I looked it up, and they said, very rarely is this ever cancer. In fact, it's okay. never cancer, really. So uh, I'm at least safe on that. But, and you can get spots on your lungs. Oh, yeah. You get them from all kinds of things. I mean, just bad air can do it. Yep. Smoking pot, I suppose, can do it. Um, 
but uh, New York is ten dollars and thirty seven cents a pack. Really? Oh. Hmm. What's California? California is ten bucks, and it says Newports are eleven, and American Spirit are fifteen bucks a pack, and they're the cheapos. Never even heard of those. Why are American? Never even heard of those. American Spirits, I've heard of. I haven't heard of those. Yeah, neither have I. Uh, it's basically around nine dollars a pack average over the United States. Really? So you figure what ninety bucks a carton average. Boy, I thought my cigars were expensive. Well, I'm glad I quit when I did. You know. I mean, yeah, ten fifty three in New York. District of Columbia ten forty two. Connecticut's ten oh four. These are in order. One two three four. What Rhode makes Island, the price difference? When, when, when was that big? Uh, when was that big push for proving that cigarettes cause cancer? There, there was a lawsuit, I, I think, like I a major lawsuit about it. Yeah, that was about what 10, 20 years ago, and then they started taking all that money and pushing it back to that campaign. Well, the reason I ask that is because before that happened, Philip Morris had a huge cigarette plant. Here in our city, yeah, I would and imagine. Once, and once was... that once that lawsuit hit, and all these fines, you know, all those reparations came about, they shut that place down, and now it's a blank field. Well, you know, I don't exactly blame the cig uh, cigarette companies because cigarette smoking, pre-rolled cigarette smoking, didn't start till maybe the 1910s, 1920s, and so it took it a, a, about 30, 40 years to marinate enough where we started seeing the effect of smoking. Uh, and I think prior to that, I mean, everybody knew it wasn't good for you. The first time you smoked and you hacked and coughed, you knew it wasn't good for you. But we didn't know that it would cause the kind of problems it does. It didn't just cause cancer. That's the least of it. Cause heart disease, cause any number of things. And they, I don't think the cigarette companies knew the full extent of how dangerous they were till oh, about, yes, till, about the, uh, till, till about the till about the 1950s. Then they knew, what? and then they started hiding it. Watch you know. that movie, The Insider. Yeah. That uh, that uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, yeah, but that was all about after 1950. And ni by yeah, 1950, but it was, but it was about the cigarette companies knew that by doing certain things when they're making the cigarettes, it enhanced the nicotine absorption. There's well, chemicals added to cigarettes to keep you addicted. That's why I smoked yep. Sherman's for years. They didn't have any chemicals added to them. There you go. And that may have helped Salt Peter. Huh? Salt Peter, was it? Salt Peter was in there. No, yeah. in, in, the, in the case of that movie, they talked about it was ammonia. They used ammonia to enhance the nicotine well, well it wasn't it uh, also wasn't the nicotine absorption a lot of the stuff they put in cigarettes was to make uh, the uh, cigarette burn keep it burning yeah evenly yeah. and slowly like i bought these shermans that had no chemicals and they would go out yeah you have to relight I think, them i, think so I used to, to smoke those too avoid house fires about five years ago i owned stock in philip morris and they took a, a, the chemical out that kept them burning. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Look at the, look at Adrian. Look at Sweetie there. She, she, yeah. She's she, she's. He doesn't look anything like Brian though. That's the trouble. I know. Uh, well, she. Um, Say hello. I think she. Uh, there, there, there. She looks like Brian too. There's Brian in there. Yeah. Yeah. The nose. Yeah, I well, think. that's true. Yeah. Tell me what you're doing this weekend. I'm doing competition. Competition. Right. Competition for what? In what? Dance. Guess? Dancing. Dancing. Yeah. Dancing. Am I right? Mm hmm. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> well, good luck. Make sure Dad shoots a video and brings it to us. <laughs> Make sure Dad buys the drug, uh, the uh, the uh, judges, not drugs. Sorry, the judges, the drug, ah. drug. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I meant to say judges came out wrong. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Flip them all fifty bucks as you walk in the door. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh oh. He's embarrassed now. Oh, she's gonna do a demo. Cool. What? What's she gonna? Oh. What's she gonna do? She's gonna do a demo here. You're hiding her. <laughs> Most of my grandma, granddaughters, <laughs> all dance. That's the thing. It's almost worse than having a cat who wants to get in front of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> she tries to get the cat and her in there. Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. I had cats that, you know, always knew when you had a camera on. You know, mm. they were right there for it. Yeah, usually the cat comes walking right across my yeah. screen. Yeah. Just like every every other meeting you see when people are at home and the cat goes right across yes right the tails going right across yeah so anyway so you know i mean i just uh, i just think that uh, i don't know anybody you know they only say that what's one in uh, uh, one in ten people today smoke mm -hmm. that used to be much higher at one time oh yeah much higher i mean i i knew very few people that didn't smoke and you know why because it looks so cool <laughs> yeah, look at the old movies, like the old Humphrey oh, yeah. Bogart. Oh yeah. Movies, yeah, you know they were smoking it all of those <clears> things. Yeah, the hard boiled, yeah. hard boiled guys, you know, with the cigarettes yeah, and the mouth. smoke just going right up there. So crazy. Now here, I'll give you a, a here. Here's a little blast from the past. How many of you, when you went to your dentist, had him smoking in his office? Yeah. <laughs> I used to deliver stuff to the hospitals, you know, in, in the 70s and 80s, and I'd deliver stuff to the hospitals, and we'd pull, I'd back into the loading docks, and guess who was out there most of the time smoking? Doctors and Doctors. nurses. Right. Out there, like, there'd be 10 of them out there, smoking away. Yeah, yeah. At the loading dock. Well, but virtually, I mean, you remember when yeah, you, well, you, you, remember when you remember when you could smoke in movie theaters? Yep, or on the airplanes. Or on airplanes. Uh, on airplanes, yep. in the back. Now, I never Use could it, figure... Yeah, like that made any difference. Uh, yeah, like that kept the smoke from going beyond the certain... Worst, worst airplane ride I ever took was on a Hughes Air West with a smoking. Oh, with a smoke... The, the freaking overhead doors were falling off. The whole thing was shaking. Everybody's smoking. <laughs> like, I'm going, I'm going to die. Didn't I'm you love the, and I was smoking. <laughs> I love dual, dual, uh, uh, like Denny's. You go to Denny's, and that's the smoking section, and this is the non-smoking section. Like the non-smoking section is not going to smell it. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you're sitting, if you're in the non, and if you're in the non-smoking section, but it's right next to the smoking section. That's like I went up. Uh, Brian will know this. I went up and picked up some chrome the other day up in Hayward at my Cromers. And yeah. you go into the lobby, and it's fine. I said, can I use a bathroom? I walked into the office. I couldn't breathe. He was in there smoking. Oh. And I couldn't breathe. I'm going, holy shit. Yeah, we really don't of course, have to. They got the, you know, they got the vats of acid in the back, too. Mm -hmm. So they're breathing acid, and then he's going into the office and smoking. <laughs> Good for him. Anyway, I'm playing the theme now, since you can't hear the theme. We can't hear it. Can, you can't well, we hear can it. it. You know. But uh, uh, anyway, hey, that's it for tonight. Boy, I'm glad I got through it okay. My arm's still killing me, and I'm still feeling like I got a little flu-like symptoms. You'll be okay tomorrow. Oh, I know I'll be okay tomorrow. It'll pass. But you have like a thousand tests you can test yourself. Right? Yeah, well, I've got, I've got the, the 30 tests that Marjorie has here. I thought I had the flu earlier. I thought I had the flu earlier this week. Yeah. And I started taking my, my antihistamine for allergies, yeah. and I started improving immediately. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Antihistamines always seem to work. Anyway, yep. listen, that's it. We've run out of time here. Uh, Jeff, good good talking to you again. Uh, and a big uh, thanks to Alan for being here tonight and producing tonight's show, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you for being here. Uh, and uh, uh, Vernon, always a pleasure to have you here. Brian, you and Go that warriors. you and that little cutie next to you. Thank you so much for calling. Oh, oh, she oh she does this now when I said that. 
Uh, yeah, and also uh, a big thanks to uh, uh, to Kevin as well. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. That's them for tonight. <laughs> and even Adrian was waving goodnight. Anyway, we'll see you again tomorrow right here. Stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next with The Intersection, and he'll take your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. In the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Good night, everybody.